Alrighty, y'all. What's up? Welcome back to the show. We're looking at an article today, a little bit different, but same concept. We're looking at another Europe versus America video. This is 15 things Europe has perfected that America has not. Now, of course, I know people always bring up that these are blanket statements. Europe's very diverse, tons of different regions, countries, cultures, uh, etc. I get it. Same with America, very diverse, tons of different states, regions, cultures, blah, blah, blah. But just, just use our imagination here. These are actually kind of fun, I think. Take it with a grain of salt, of course. Let's get into it. Fresh bread. Oh, yeah, definitely. The superiority of good bread in Europe compared to the U.S. was mentioned by many and is something I've heard several times on my travels. Uh, yeah, this one, Europe wins hands down. I would love to go to so many different bakeries within so many different regions and countries in Europe. Uh, every time I've seen it in pictures like right here and, of course, in video, it just looks spectacular. And, of course, hearing uh, from a couple people that I know that have been to Europe and, uh, you know, like been to France uh, and gone to a bakery and, and just gotten this fresh, unbelievable selection of different breads and desserts, uh, it sounds divine for sure. And this kind of thing, it's just it's different here. Of course, there's bread and different products here. Uh, and you know, there's like fresh bakeries, but it's different. I feel like it's nowhere near as strong of a culture uh, as Europe has as a whole. It's pretty weird. I don't know why this isn't more of a thing here in the U.S. Christmas markets, number two. Yeah, this one was really interesting. I really didn't know about these. Um, of course, everywhere has some interesting Christmas traditions and, uh, you know, feel and, and festivals and stuff. But uh, I reacted to some Christmas market videos, you know, uh, a few months ago before Christmas last year. And people mentioned that there is some uh, decent Christmas markets, at least to check out, to try and get the feel for one uh, in Chicago. So I would like to do that. But yeah, these are really, really cool and definitely not, you know, huge or not a mainstream thing at all here in the U.S. Not to mention going to one over in Germany or France or wherever with all the beautiful, like, vibe and old architecture and buildings um, would definitely add to the f aesthetic and, you know, the history behind these. So, yeah, it would be great to go to one in Europe. It does mention that we have farmers markets and flea markets. Yeah, we do have a good market culture here in the U.S. Don't forget that. We have tons of uh, awesome, like, you know, farmers markets, uh, art markets, all these different things, um, especially in like spring and summer uh, and fall. It, it's really fun. So we do have different kind of markets, but just Christmas markets hasn't really caught on here. Tax inclusion on goods. This one, w there's no debate here. Europe wins. <laughs> uh, you have to understand most Americans are annoyed by the fact that here, you look at the price tag, and then it's not even the price. You go up, and it's actually more. So then, of course, you fill up a cart. Everything's more than it appears to be, and yeah, it adds up pretty quick. So um, it's I don't know why they even use the price tag here, <laughs> right? It's not even right. Just put the tax on there on the price tag like they do in most countries. It makes sense. I don't know what we're doing here. Another person from Europe replied that they had experienced the same confusion and frustration, especially when traveling to different states with variant tax rates. Yeah, to put a, a nail in that, that is uh, even worse. So if you're traveling around the U.S. on vacation and you're used to the price being, you know, the price, <laughs> uh, it can be frustrating because tax rates are different in every single state. So yeah, it, it's uh, it's just a whole nother layer of calculation and, uh, quite frankly, annoyance. Bathroom stalls. Oh, yeah. This one is big time. I've seen some pictures of bathroom stalls in, in Europe, and, of course, they're way more private. And they're actually, like, kind of high-end, like, really nice. Um, most bathrooms here are going to be, like, pretty good, like, pretty okay. Some are really crappy. Some are really nice as well here. Uh, but 90% of the time, they're going to be that weird, like... They have huge gaps in all the panels, and then the top and bottom are, like, really, like, open. Yeah, they're not private. It's really weird. It's really uncomfortable. Most people don't like them here. They don't try and go in public if they can help it, me included. <laughs> try and wait till I can go home. It's so, 
it's not a good feeling going in public here in most bathrooms. They're just uh, they're not they're not fun. Well-funded public education system. One person from Europe praised a well-funded public education, noting that many countries include post-secondary education in their system, unlike the American system. However, they also noted that it was odd to them that the public education system in the U.S. does not pay their teachers better or provide students with adequate supplies. Yeah, supply issues can be hit or miss. That's definitely a thing. The teacher thing is big time. I think a lot of teachers uh, in most cities and most states don't seem to earn enough, so it's really weird, like, wouldn't teachers and education be the backbone of like society? That's how, that's where everyone starts, right? It, it is a big dip thing here. I think it is definitely has some problems. Uh, I've even read, I think, and, and this may not be true. I think I've read that America does like spend a lot on education, but then it doesn't seem to like translate to the real world. I don't know. It, it's a mess. It's kind of above my head, honestly. I guess I'm really thankful for my path I took. I, I, I'm not drowning in you know, university and college debt, like a lot of people are, it's ridiculous how expensive that stuff is. And it's weird. It's like, you know, a lot of really great jobs require a nice university education, but then you have to go into debt for like a decade or two to get it. It's really weird, right? Fair pay for food service staff. Now this one, uh, I'm totally agreement with Europe on. Uh, look, here in the U.S., you do get good service. People are really nice, I think, as for the most part. So that's kind of nice, right? Then, of course, uh, some people attribute, like, really good service and, uh, you know, nice behavior from the service staff because they're trying to get a tip. I think mostly people are nice here, but uh, that's definitely part of it, right? Just to put it simply, I don't know why the customer, when I go out to eat or when anyone goes to eat, um, you know, you're paying for your food, you're paying for the convenience of someone's making a nice food and, and bringing it to you, whatever, right? It's it's an experience, but it's weird. It's kind of not your job to pay the staff, right? Wouldn't that be like the restaurant's job, like the manager's job or the owner's job rather um, to pay the staff? That's what you would think. So the tip culture is kind of out of control here. Uh, I think if people are really nice in any culture, um, you know, throwing them a little bit of a tip is just showing like, hey, I appreciate you uh, being really nice and doing your job very well. But uh, as in relying on tips to pay your rent and stuff, yeah, that's no good, I don't think. I don't think that's too good at all. Walkable cities, yeah, this one is just, look, the U.S. and Europe, uh, it's fun to compare, but in, in, in stuff like this, they're just different, right? You know, uh, the infrastructure in Europe is just totally different, totally different geography, um, different sizes, and of course, uh, way more history, way more, it, it's got more age, right? It's an older infrastructure, so it's set up different. Uh, it's definitely set up with more walkable areas in mind, and uh, the U.S. is very spread out. There are a couple of decent walkable cities, you could argue, right? Um, I don't know all of them, but I know like Chicago and New York City are pretty walkable uh, for U.S. standards, so there are some, but of course, not most of the U.S. A lot of big cities are really huge and sprawled out, and um, yeah, they're just not going to be walkable. You need a car here. It, it's just how it works, unfortunately. Uh, also, it points out like problems with sidewalks and pedestrian crossings. That depends too. Like some cities are set up really well, or more specifically, maybe some parts of the city are set up well and other parts aren't. Um, so yeah, that is a truly a hit or miss, and unfortunately, it seems to be a more of a miss more of the time in the U.S., but yeah, it, being a pedestrian can be rough in the U.S. You got to be careful, and uh, you gotta, you're in for some long walks. Social safety net and public programs. Unlike the U.S., where there's often a need for such support, Europe has a solid social safety net. So this is kind of straightforward. It's a little bit vague. It doesn't really uh, uh, expand upon this, but um, sure, I, I'm assuming, you know, I know taxes are usually higher in Europe, right? But but then again, uh, you don't really have to convince me that uh, I'm sure they put that tax money to better use. It certainly looks that way, right? So, uh, working rights, number nine. Many Europeans were shocked to learn that paid time off is also used when Americans cannot work due to sickness. One person further stated that they found it strange that no laws regulate work time in the U.S. and that companies decide whether holidays are days off work. Yeah, that is one thing annoying uh, when you go from job to job, company to company. 
uh, their holiday schedule might be different. So you might get certain holidays off at one place and then not at the other. You might get more days off for Christmas at this place, but not at that other place. It's kind of all over the place. It's not very universal. So that kind of can be annoying. And then, um, yeah, the sickness thing. Look, I'm, uh, it, it's one of the things I think a lot of people are frustrated to hear about. Um, like, like, like I've always said in these videos, America's super corporate, super business, like go hard or go home. And uh, I think that has gotten so far um, blown out of proportion that uh, it's just, it, it, I don't know, corporations are just so like, save all the money in the world, make all the profit in the world, right? You know, the fact is people get sick, no one chooses to get sick, right? You know, you can try and, and not get sick. But at the end of the day, some people are just, you're going you're gonna to get sick eventually, right? And uh, acting like people have to use their vacation time to take off for sick days or, um, or you know, get in trouble or, or get fired if they're gone too long while they're sick. It's just, I think that's absolutely wild. That's like ludicrous to me. It's really weird. Uh, I, I'm glad to hear that most countries give you time off when you're sick because uh, while that makes logical sense, unfortunately, a lot of companies here in the U.S. just uh, don't think like that. If you're sick, you're not doing work, and uh, I guess that's a problem. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's it's uh, it's weird. Number 10, unexploded ordnance from World Wars. What is this talking about? That is a beautiful shot, by the way. Look at those mountains. Wow. Someone added that they worked in the commercial fishing industry in Alaska. They said there are specific ports and islands where they cannot wander off-road due to unexploded ordnance uh, from World War II. person highlights a stark difference between Europe and America regarding the remnants of war as well as many parts of Europe were heavily affected by World War II and have been successfully reconstructed and safe for civilians. Yeah, that's a good one. That's um, something I don't know much about, I guess. It's kind of interesting. I have seen signs out west that say, like, watch out for explosives and unexploded, like, I don't know, munitions and stuff. Um, so I guess that is a thing in the U.S. Uh, there's still a lot of parts out west and definitely in Alaska that are just kind of not inhabited, right? A lot of empty parts. It's interesting. Of course, Europe would have a lot of uh, remnants of war, but uh, it seems to be that they have done a really swift job of reconstructing and cleaning up, so to say. So uh, good on them. Europe probably wins this for sure. Regulations on rent raise. Now this one goes state to state. This has been in the news a lot in the last few years. Uh, some states do put restrictions on raising rent, but some states don't really have that restriction uh, in order or, or, you know, landlords find loopholes or whatever. So yeah, this can be a scary one. Some people like having doubling rent over the last couple of years, uh, you know, you know, just an example, say you pay like 1500 bucks a month for rent and they've been paying that for a long time. And then all of a sudden they, they just start getting these crazy increases to, you know, like 1900 a month and then 2100 a month before you know it, they're paying almost double what they used to in a matter of two or three years. That's pretty scary. That's a big deal. That's uh, a lot of people can't manage that. Person expressed surprise upon learning about the regulations on how much rents can be raised in some European countries. And American landlords have been reported to increase rent by whatever they want. Yeah, again, in some states they can, and that's that's scary. That should be regulated. That's almost criminal to like price people out of their living space, right? Good cheese. What? Now this is something I don't know about either. I know a lot of cheeses come from Europe and stuff, but. Uh, I, you know, I don't know specifics. Uh, I just, you know, I, I like a few different cheeses. I don't really have that much or, or buy gourmet cheeses and stuff. It's not something I really indulge in. Perhaps I should. I think it'd be maybe interesting to dive into that world. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to learn about it. I know Wisconsin nearby has Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin has like really good cheese. They, they brag about maybe it's really good for American standards. Uh, maybe it can go toe to toe with European cheese. I don't know. I wouldn't be the guy to know that. But uh, supposedly it says there was no objection in the form about which place is better cheese. Europe wins. It might be due to differences in the production and regulation of cheese or simply a matter of taste. Yeah, that one I'm going to leave for you guys to say in the comments. Maybe if you've been to the U.S. and Europe uh, or you've gotten to eat, you know, different cheeses from each place. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you think is the clear winner and why? More importantly, like why? If the cheese is better in Europe, why is it better? Affordable health care, yes. This one, uh, I've 
covered so much. It's like, I don't even know what to say anymore. Yeah, Europe wins. <laughs> Our healthcare is expensive and uh, it's kind of scary actually. So pay to use restrooms. This one, all right guys, here I've heard this in one other video and I hadn't ever heard that in my life before. I didn't know this. Pay to use restrooms are common in Europe. And uh, that is, you're never going to find that in the U.S. I think that is ridiculous. Um, so I guess everywhere you get some things right and some things wrong. If you guys may get healthcare right more often than we do here, uh, well, we get this right. You know, <laughs> I think you do have a right to healthcare, which shame on the U.S. They should fix that so it's not so crazy expensive here. But I also think you have a right to uh, use the restroom, right? Going, um, going potty, right, is part of life. That's uh, we're organisms that have to do that. There's no getting around it, right? Everyone does it. I think charging for that is just uh, atrocious. I, I don't understand it. That's one thing the U.S. wins on this one. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it says this difference isn't a good one. Many pointed out their frustration with pay-to-use restrooms in Europe, stating it's a risk they're unwilling to take. People find it ridiculous to rely on the shame not to soil themselves and believe restrooms should be accessible to all. I agree. Give me a lavatory or give me death, they proclaimed. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, U.S. restrooms are all free, and there's plenty of different choices. So, uh, Americans have free toilet access, and Europeans agreed it's better, but with their stalls. I will say the stall pictured here is actually kind of cool. I've never seen that style of, like, bathroom stall. It actually looks nice. Uh, here, you typically find, you know, bathrooms within all these different buildings or businesses or stores. Uh, or if it was outside like this, it would more likely be just like a porta potty, which no one likes those. Those aren't really nice at all. <laughs> this looks like much more luxurious, a little nicer than a porta potty for sure. And finally, good public transportation. Yeah, I've heard this. Uh, public transport here is just, again, hit or miss, most of the time miss. I think Chicago is pretty good public transportation, in my opinion. You know, we have the L. The way it's structured, I, I think public transportation with CTA is uh, pretty good, right? But, you know, again, city to city, you know, there might be a couple of gems in the U.S., but for the most part, uh, it's it's not known. We're just not known for our public transportation. We're known for <laughs> jumping the car, jumping the truck, right? That's how it works here. Pretty crazy, right, compared to Europe. I know Europe uh, has a lot of efficient and very affordable public transportation, as mentioned here, buses, trams, trains, and uh, taking a train, you know, through the mountains of Switzerland and uh, southern France and stuff sounds beautiful. And uh, that's just not really an experience you, that anyone has in the U.S. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. What did you think of that list? Uh, I, I really am interested to see the comments on this one. I feel like videos like these spark some interesting conversations and uh, thoughts down there. So I will see it down there. <laughs> did you agree with all these? Did you disagree? I'd have to say the majority of those, yeah, I think Europe takes the cake with a lot of those. Maybe only a couple of the U.S. might have had an edge. But uh, anywho, I think these are fun, as always. Uh, they're kind of vague, but they're kind of interesting, at least, to see some differences, right? Please throw a like on there if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to be part of this amazing community. Keep your awesome suggestions coming, and uh, it's going to do it for this one. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker, and until next time, y'all, stay safe out there. I'll catch you later.